Hello, Dinesh. How are you doing? Hi, Professor. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Good. Job. How is going? Yeah, going good, Professor. Everything. <laughs> okay. So let's wait for a minute so that a little bit more people join us and then we'll start. Okay. Sure, Professor. Do you have any question about the last lecture? Uh, no, Professor. I have designed some uh, use cases and wireframes. Oh yeah, definitely. You were showing them to me yesterday also. Yes, yes. So professor. let's see them today, right? Definitely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So rather, let me stop share and let you share also. You know. Yeah, sure. Professor. So I let you share. Um, for disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, okay. Let me open it. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, can you see my uh, screen, Professor? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. So, use case is normally written as a Word document and made later on PDF. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, note, right? Oh. So, use case normally we don't write in, uh, in PowerPoint. Oh, okay, Professor. Uh, okay, so normally it is written in, uh, you know, portrait style instead okay. of landscape. Okay. 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 Ankit Rao, uh, please turn on your uh, camera. Okay. Okay, good to see you back. How is it going? It's going good, sir. Okay, awesome. So, uh, Dinesh wants to share some wireframes he has ma made and I yesterday saw a few of them and they are re really good. I thought to share them with you all, right? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, please show them to us. Uh, yeah, Professor. Uh, this is actually the uh, sign-in. So for uh, example, this is, this is the wireframe for sign-in page probably, right? Yes, Professor. Exactly. So this is for sign-in page, and he is giving various options, right? For example, uh, email address, password, and remember me. Okay, one quick thing. Yes, Maybe you can uh, enlighten me on it. So once you say remember me, right? So the browser is going to memorize it, right? But if, even if you don't say this thing, browser is still going to do it, right? Uh, Unless you you uh, forbid this thing on the in the browser by itself, right? Yes, professor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why people uh, kind of put this thing over here, but I've never seen this thing working in that sense. Uh, no, professor. Uh, uh, what I thought is like, uh, in server side, uh, they have uh, many sessions, no, so that they can extend the sessions, no. If we click on remember me, it's like okay. Uh, yeah, maybe I, that way. I don't know, like, uh, I'm not okay, sure. Yeah, but I, I personally have never seen it working. Okay. So great. But anyways, this is this is definitely a good thing to share. So you yeah. are showing, uh, you are showing this uh, nav bar on the top, right? Very good. Yeah. And yes. then here we have this uh, face button, right? You have bordered it with this circle, which is also good. Yes. Yeah, and then you have this. Uh, hamburger icon also over here, right? Yes, yeah. So normally we have this or this, right? So maybe once you are logged in, uh, once you are logged out, right? You are not logged in. So maybe it is hamburger over here. And once you are logged in, it is replaced by this this thing over here. Uh, Just no, an I idea. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it is all up to the designer, you know, how does he want yeah, to yeah. see the things, right? Uh, okay, yeah, show yeah. us some more. Uh, this is uh, uh, if, if user uh, entered uh, this or her credentials wrongly, uh, this page will end up in this page. Okay, what is this? This page is incorrect. Sign okay. Page, okay, okay. So, uh, so you want to show us all together a new page or this is a pop-up? Uh, uh, this is kind of a pop-up, Professor. No, no, no. So this yeah, is, once you know, want to show a pop-up, make it as a pop-up, right? Oh, sure, sure. So yeah, uh, nice effort, but you know, definitely we are all learning here. So, and plus, you know, I would say that once you have these two buttons, 
either put them in the center or put them towards right or left you know not like this that one button is on the left side and that is on the right side normally we oh, don't okay. do this thing right oh, okay. yeah this is good but you know just uh, design commands so show us the next one uh, this is a use case. Use case, uh, you know, after the, we are done yeah, with these yeah. wireframes. And uh, this is forgot password wireframe. Oh, this is forgot password. Yesterday we were kind of thinking that you know how can we accommodate it. So yeah. it has got two sections. And what is this dark button over there? This get pin. Uh, oh, this is get pin, right? Yeah. This is get pin. Yeah. And uh, after uh, clicking on get pin, uh, uh, or you you can say send pin, right? Send yeah, pin. yeah, send pin. So uh, send pin, and once you uh, send the pin, uh, then you know you will put message. pin over here, and then what is going to happen? And then what is going to happen is like uh, after. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, and then what is going to happen? So, is so take us to the last screen. So, not not this one, the pin one. Yeah, here. So I was saying that once they will enter the pin. Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can you can do this thing that you know once you press send pin button, this box by itself gets converted into the pin box instead okay. of having two boxes, right? Okay. okay. And uh, once you send the pin, then this box mm -hmm. gets converted into. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm planning like uh, after uh, uh, after uh, uh, inputting like uh, the secret pin if it is current. Then this is a pop-up uh, proposal and within that screen, a new password and retype new password will get it. Okay, so this like, is for yeah, yeah. forgot password uh, thing. Okay, and it has so many fields again. What is the top field? Uh, enter that, that registered uh, email address. Okay, so yeah. okay, email address is already sent. So I believe that at this stage, we need not to have email address. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's kind of... Uh, uh, Pop okay. Professor, I, I need to change that actually. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. You need to change this one. Definitely. Uh, but anyways, I'm very happy that you have, you know, shown me some work, right? And uh, you're doing work and, uh, you know, you're progressing. You cannot uh, understand these things without, you know, dipping your fingers into the dirt of work, right? Okay, okay. okay great. Uh, Anybody else wants to show their wireframes, a few of them or uh, use cases? I asked you guys to write some use cases. Please do your homeworks, right? So since this is first, first week, right? So I'm kind of, uh, you know, trying to give you space, give you all space that you will start working. Right, so please start working by yourself and uh, don't let me enforce anything, right? So it would be better that if you if you do it yourself, right? Yes, you have not done anything about it? Uh, yes, I, I did uh, uh, the sign up process. Okay. Sign up process you have done. So, yeah. uh, so Dinesh, I will request you to stop share. Yes, so sir. that Yash can share with us. Thank okay. you very much, Dinesh. I'm very happy. Yes, uh, I I did, but uh, I have one uh, question like that. Uh, if we pick the face from uh, in the first step, if we pay, uh, pick the face from the first step, after that, uh, after that, we cannot edit that uh, uh, face, uh, miss face in uh, our face image. Yeah, we cannot do that. Yes, so you're I, right. I think, the, I think the, at the register sign, we just uh, uh, we just uh, uh, just take the default this face, uh, this face, and after in uh, in uh, in uh, when he's signing. He can update as many times as he he logging. I yeah, like. I, I believe that if you if you please go to the website pickafacenick dot com. Is it open with you already? Uh, no, no, it's open. Yeah, please open it since you are sharing your screen. Okay, and go to go down a little bit. 
So here, if you come over here, so if you pick the face and the neck, right? Yes. Sir. Click it, right? And now you can go back. Can you see this small arrow towards left hand? I'll go back here. Ah. This where you have enter. No, where have you gone? No, no, no. This small and okay. Mm -hmm. Pick the face. Okay. And neck. Mm -hmm. And press pick a face and neck. Okay, click. Okay. Now you can see. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. On the same button. Don't scroll. On the same button. Mm -hmm. Towards the left side. Ah, uh, here. Yeah. Okay, so we have this available over here. So I have made it like very minute kind of element. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. this is there. But so uh, one... after after the signing, uh, the member cannot change uh, his name and. Uh... Yeah, for now, but definitely we want to make that functionality over here, right? We want to make that functionality. So for now, it has not made yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. Let me see. You uh, you have made so many of these uh, wireframes. So let's see. Yeah, these. I already I uh, I only use that uh, the same signing process, like uh, okay. and link and after that uh, pin and uh, email and pin the same as uh, yesterday we did. Like uh, if if pin is correct and it, if not correct then it will show instead of pin uh, like a two two type flash. Okay. That the pin is not correct. Okay. Uh, like, Great. Good. Good. Uh, anybody else has something to share with us? Um, yes, I have, sir. Okay. Wonderful. Everybody is doing work. Wonderful. You know. So just share it with me. Good. I love to see people working in my class. Yes, please. Who is sharing? I'm sharing. Oh, one second. Okay, great, great, good. Um, okay. I've I've created some um, okay. sign and the creator account slides. Okay. So these are. So let's see. So already a member and email password sign in create account forgot password. Very good. Go scroll down. And then this is create account. Here is Nick next? Okay. Um, this uh, for create account. This all will come in one page. Uh, these are not different different pages. Right. Uh, good. Yeah, and how links. they are going to you know slide? So are you going to do the same way as I am doing? Like they are. Yes. Uh, going like this, and I want to put some sound over there also. <laughs> okay, like shh, <laughs> kind of sound, <laughs> right? So, okay, good. Yeah, I think this is, okay, just a minute. So already a member, right, okay. Yeah, this link should be here, right? Because if yeah. he's saying, okay, I'm not already a member, so he has something. To, and there should be one more thing, cancel. You can add a back button. Add if back he button. clicks already a member, it will uh, go back on. No, for example, or they want to go and change their face. Oh, okay, like that, right? yeah. We so can... you need to give that back button, right? That is missing. Yeah. Okay. It's all the same. Like here, we need okay. to provide country and, phone number. And one more thing here, that look, I have designed the form in such a way that all the time the form size is not changing. Yeah. Right. Yes. So once you either you know you want to show a different pop up, but if something is like made in a sliding fashion. Then its size should say, remain the same. Otherwise, it will look it will not look very good to the eyes. I think it will be more compatible if we provide all the details in one page instead of sliding. So, uh, if someone wants to change the previous page things, he can't change like that. So the deal is that here we have this human psychology kind of thing. That if we ask them so many things over there, they say, hey, they are asking too much. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Right. Yeah. So this is another thing, right? 
So like for example, in that website, I gave you an example, muchbet.com. There I have one form where I'm asking everything on one page, right? Yes, yes. So it, is, it does not look that good, yes. right? So basically then I modified that analogy and I, I broke down all these details to get them, you know, one kind of the animation other. thing. Yeah, animation thing. Maybe some sound also there. It will help <laughs> them motivate. Them. <laughs> yeah, it will attract people. Yeah, of course. Uh, okay. Next to password and reset password. Okay, repeat password. Yeah. And next. Name things. First name, okay. last name. Okay, good, good, good. Um, so this that's is already a member, so sign in. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's kind of incomplete. I'll complete it. Okay, good. Anybody else wants to share something else? Okay. Yes, I would like you to uh, go and share your screen with us. Yes. And I want to show you guys a use case right in front of uh, you in action. So go to your browser. Can you see? No, probably you have not shared your entire screen with us. Yeah, now we can see. And here open a new tab. And here go to matchmath.com. Great. And now sign in. Yeah, or if you want, you can go to classes. And there it will suggest you that to sign in, right? For example, if you go down and want to register into a class. Okay, sign in for register. Yeah, if you click this button. Mm -hmm. So please sign in first, right? So if you go to sign in page, now here there is, a, there is a little bit of thing that we could have given this thing that once you press okay button, you should be redirected to sign in page, right? So we could have modified it. But that thing would be mentioned in the use case, right? So we go over there in uh, sign in page and sign in. Okay, guys, just keep all these things into your mind, whatever is going to happen right now. And because I want to uh, show you that how to write this use case, right? So somebody wants to register the class, right? So the precondition is precondition is that they are signed in, right? Pre, this is the precondition that they are signed in, right? And now they are they are going to browse the class, right? Or go up a little bit. Here we have a search bar also, right? Little down. Mm -hmm. Show us the search bar. Yeah, here. Okay, it's not showing the search bar here. Okay, so anyways, they will select the uh, register button, right? And they will select, select a class and press the register button, right? So mm -hmm. press the registration button. So as you press the registration button, look, what has happened? Go over it carefully. Please so, so it has shown you the terms and conditions. Yes. And within the terms and conditions, they are using your email address. Mm -hmm. First of all, they are using the class name over here in the first line you can see, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can see that they are using your email address. Mm -hmm. They are even using your phone number over here somewhere also, right? So basically this website has customized mm -hmm. these terms and conditions, not only according to the student, but according to the course also. Can you see this thing? Yes. And here, you know, the fee is also mentioned over here. So it is also according to the course, right? Now, if you want, you can go and you can cancel over here. You can press cancel and it will get canceled. And if you go back over here, press registration. Ah, uh, here? Yes. Yeah, or you can press registration anywhere else. Cancel this one go down and press registration over here and here you can see 
that we have again this uh, this these instructions here they are uh, this these instructions are according to uh, this course and they are according to the person who is signing in right and if you go over here down there there is like this check circle uh, here yeah yeah we agree and once you agree right so they are giving your name and address and every information over here mm -hmm. right and then if you register click register Okay, class is only. Please send request to audit the class, right? Okay, so go to audit. Here, right? Yeah. So if a class is yeah, I think it is the disk one. Okay, don't don't use this this one. So yeah, don't use this one either. Go down. Okay. Because I want to show you something with the with the price, right? Yeah, register this one maybe. Okay, go down. Click agree. Right? And pay with Stripe. And you can see that this is like Stripe integration, right? Where you can give your information, credit card number and everything and then you know the payment would be charged of course cancel this thing mm -hmm. now having seen this process so this is a full flight process which is being made right in front right so basically somebody who is me actually so somebody coded all this process right so developed all this process so before i develop this process i need to have something in writing that how I'm going to, or how I'm supposed to make this uh, happen, right? So first thing would be that you have to draw the mock-up for this, right? You're, you're going to draw the mock-ups, right? Or wireframes that how the page would look like, where is the registration button, how the view is going to change once you press the registration button, how is the view is, so press the registration button for once more. I registration? Yeah how the view is, so view has changed, right? So once you press the registration button, they have shown you the instructions, right? Or, uh, or terms and conditions you can see. And then, you know, if you press this checkbox over there or check circle over there, you know, now they have, you have like virtually signed this agreement, right? So you say, I, we agree with uh, this and terms and pay this much amount, right? So this is like an agreement has been signed. And then you have this button shown, which was not previously here. And once you press the button, now this third party software is called, mm -hmm. right? Now this third party software is called, which will just press this button. So now this third party software is called, which will charge the payment, right? Why? Because, you know, to charge the payment is a very serious issue. You have to have like so many federal compliance you know you have to do to uh, to be able to charge the payment so that is the reason that most of the sites other than that they are amazon or ebay or some big sites they will not charge directly right they will use some third party plugin to charge it right so for example here i'm using stripe plugin but i have customized it right it looks like that as if we are charging but it is not we are charging here it is written pay via Stripe, right? So it is actually Stripe who is charging, right? And this is like we have done Stripe integration over here. So once you have seen this process, right? I would like to write this use case with you so that you can understand this thing that how do we make use cases, right? So before I write this use case, I would ask somebody to go ahead and make these wireframes for us. Right. So who is going to make, who is very good with uh, some, you know, smart draw, Visio, and they can make these mock-ups pretty quickly. Anybody wants to volunteer? Yes, you have this website open with you, right? Why don't you make these mock-ups, right? Okay. So just make, just make a quick mock-up, right? Not like, uh, 
very detailed right just you know mock up so that we can understand this thing also that how do we draw these wire wire frames or mock ups and then how do we use them to write our use cases okay. right? and user story is as a user or as a registered student i want to register into a course mm -hmm. right so this is your use user story Yeah, you can copy paste that thing. Yeah, you can copy the slide. Maybe it will help you. Or you can do one more thing. You can take a screenshot of that thing and just, you know, uh, pretend as if it is like a mock-up. So uh, starting from this. So just you know, minimize it a little bit so that a lot of page is there in the screen. Mm -hmm. Maybe fifty percent. So uh, start from this is it. So just give me control. Let me let me show okay. you what I'm saying here. Um, request remote control. Request. Thank you. So okay. So it is not allowing me to shrink. So can you shrink? So that lot like major part of the web page comes into the screen view. Okay, so this is the browser running. Okay. So let let me make this uh, web page. Just unshare and let me let me just uh, draw uh, this mocker for you. And then you know I will write the use case also. Just stop sharing. Okay. Good. Thank you. So. Can you see my screen? No, sir. Okay. Let me. Okay. Go to PowerPoint. Maybe create a new slide. Wireframe. Number maybe 12, just a hypothetical number. What is this? Okay. Okay. So for example, how we will draw it. So for example, we'll show that up on the top, up on the top, there would be a carousel. This text box. This is the text box. Right. And then 
basically here I want to have an empty box this is where is the empty box so maybe here I will make an empty box right and Okay, and maybe here. So just a placeholder of logo, right? And then um, right over here, we would be having sign out right and maybe Right over here, we will be having classes, right? So this is the classes. And down there, the left half, the part we would be having a picture I don't have a picture there's two. So just write down this thing. Picture, right? And on the right side, now on the right side, we have to write things. And we are going to make them all. And here we'll make the button. register uh, and make a control C control V Right, something like this, and here we'll have the register button. 
And then if you uh, see this thing, uh, before this register button, we have another, And here we have a tent. And audit radio buttons. Right? And you can make it centers lined. And this is going to be a button, so we can have line, solid line. Right, so this is going to be a button, and similarly, so you have to make it all in detail. Let me, let me just pause the share for a minute and let me pull some mockups which one of my class made so that you also get inspired that when we say mockups, what do you mean by mockups, right? Or wireframes, which is a nicer word for it. Okay, let me just pause for a minute and let me pull them for you. Okay. I'm still with you. Okay. Okay. It will take a minute to download. Let me get them and let me show them to you. Okay, I've got them. Okay, so can you see my screen? And this is, these are some mockups I want to show you. So for example, these are, the project was a virtual university project. So this is the virtual university and these are admin, this is guest, this is instructor, uh, invigilator, students. So let me show you students mockup. So these are all various mockups. Okay, look, so this is some mock-up they made for, for, the, for me. So this is like, you can see this thing on the top that this is the logo, right? And on the top they're mentioning when student clicks on current course to see the current course material and to attend the live class. And then, you know, this is the logo 
and then this is the university and they have made this nav bar and search button bell icon and then complete course whatever the course name is its details right and then on the right they have the image and then the price and go to course etc so basically these this is this is a very ideal wireframe they have made any question have you got a little bit of idea uh, there, uh, what is the difference between uh, the wireframe and model uh, the deal is that wireframe is normally rough stage right so basically uh, we draw it with hand maybe it is rough not exact icons are made right so yeah, yeah. so just give the idea then we use uh, write the use case right and uh -huh. as we write the use case then we give that feedback into the into the wireframe also and that improves the wireframe okay. right so once you know our use case and wireframe they are like in sync with each other right then we use smart draw or uh, visio or some other software to finally make these mock ups oh, okay have you got the idea yes ma'am yeah. okay so let me show you a couple of them more so that you get better idea that what are the expectations when we say that we are making the mock ups right so let me show you a few more at least a couple of them okay for example uh, course register this one right so once you want to register a course this is that mock up right let me show you mock ups from another website uh, which i actually administered right i was the uh, team lead and uh, uh, architect system architect for that project let me pull that for you and let me show you what is that doing give me a minute at this time my system is little bit overwhelmed by all these softwares open so if i get drop down so please stay in the conversation i will come back um, Okay, uh, just give me a minute. And this is very, very important that uh, we understand this thing that how should we make these diagrams. Okay. Okay. Let me share with you. Okay, so there are some others. So for example, this is a mock-up for a website with the name property views. 
right so we wrote their use cases can you hear me please yes okay yeah, so we wrote the use cases we made five frames first right once we made the wireframes then we wrote the use cases made the mockups so even after making the mockups there were some changes right and can you see this thing these arrows over here they are telling that what are these things right so like the arrows i was making uh, with yesh yesterday right hello and you know it is telling that once you know somebody will hover over here this pop-up will show up right and this carousel is running over here things like this so basically this is detailed mock-up this is another view of the page right it is telling that which page you are at and then you know it has the numbering and this is a footer detail so everything is there so whatever you actually want to make they have detailed everything so this is this is a detailed detailed mockup we don't accept expect these details when we are making wireframes but once we have made the wireframes we have written the use case so by writing the use case we give feedback to these wireframes and Finally, we final them as mockup. So these mockups are made in Illustrator actually. And these mockups are made with the help of professional designers. Got it, guys? Any question about it? Hello, any question? No, sir. Okay, so let me minimize it. And let me come back to the mockup I was making for you. Okay. Let me minimize this one also. And let me go to the PowerPoint. Oh. PowerPoint. Okay, it's coming up. Okay, so here this is the register button, and let me copy paste some portion of it. So come over here, copy this part, Control C, maybe paste it down there. Control V. Put it over here, right? And as you can see that over there we have these things flipped. So maybe this thing over here, picture, this thing over here, this thing over here. Right, so we'll make this sketch and then definitely we'll fill this space also with the actual wording, whatever uh, those things are, for example, name of the course, duration, fee, uh, books required, whatever the detail that will come on the top. So once you have made this, uh, uh, you can say, wireframe, so now we are ready to write its use case. So since this is a class setting, I cannot give too much of time to each one of these components. Otherwise, mind this thing, then making of these wireframes is like two, three months process, right? We take two, three months to make all these wireframes, right? And then we take further some time, depends upon the uh, depth of the project. And then we take like two, three months actually to depending on the workforce also to write these use cases. And then, you know, these uh, practical mockups are made and then we go for the coding, right? So we come back over here. 
So let me copy this use case. Control C. Let me put a break. Insert page break. Okay, so say use case number 23, whatever the name, number is, right? Name is register a course, right? Use case summary could be a student registers a course. Right? So actors and actor is student, right? So this is the human actor. There is a non-human actor also involved here and that is the Stripe payment portal, right? So that is a non-human actor who is interacting with our system, right? Preconditions, what are the preconditions? The student is already signed in. The student is at uh, classes page. Guys, are you getting me? Hello, right? So add classes page. Okay, here you can also refer wireframe, maybe 12, whatever the name of the wireframe is, right? So there you can show them that student is at this page, right? Then description. So in the description, you write the student browse through the classes and select the one he or she wants to register, right? If the student has a promo code. So I would suggest that you can go to the website and check that there is a column for promo code, right? If the student has a promo code, he or she enters the promo code and press this button, right? You can refer over here, you can refer wireframe. Right. You can see that button is over there, right? So press this button. As the button is pressed, the promised from The promise B is offered to the student 
by the reduction of prices in the corresponding columns right so can you check this thing that whatever i'm writing is making sense to you hello you can go ahead check the website and see that over there there is a uh, box where they can enter the promo code and if you press this uh, sign right so you can get that discount So currently I don't have any promo code that I can give you, but, uh, or should I, yeah, I can find one for you, but definitely, you know, I have to generate for you otherwise. Okay. So, so here we can also refer. So this is what I want. So if I go to that website, if I go to that website, We'll go to classes tab. My internet is getting a little slow at this moment. Okay, so here you can see this thing, enter promo code, right? Say for example, I enter a fake promo code. By the way, it is asking me to register first. So anyways, if I enter a fake promo code over here, it will show me a pop-up that this promo code is not good, right? So this is something you have to deal in exceptions, right? So coming back over here, So this is, these are all practical running projects, you know, through which I am teaching you this thing that how do we practically make these things. So we come over here. of jamming me a little bit. I'm sorry, too many softwares are open in, in my system right now. Uh, just stay with me. I think I have to, this is the time to close a few of them. Can you still hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Sorry, this is taking some time. It is uh, waiting. Okay. Okay, good. So we come back here. So here in the exceptions, we need to write this first exception that incorrect incorrect promo code, right? So the deal is that this is the exception, the incorrect promo code, but we need to tell exactly how we are going to deal with this situation over here, right? So for example, if you just write over here, incorrect promo code, right? So developer will ask, hey, what is my role? What I'm going to make for that, right? So either, you know, you want me to show some message right over there in red that, hey, this is incorrect or you want me to throw a pop-up over there, right? So basically all these things, you know, we have to mention. So we come back over here. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, then the student I think let me close a few of them. Otherwise it would be very difficult to work. Let me write, let me close down a few softwares. So for example, let me close this PowerPoint. Okay, let me close down this picture viewer. Let me close down Excel also. Okay. They are like taking too much of memory. What is this? So let me close this also. Okay. So I think it should work now. So I would say that by the uh, reduction of prices in the corresponding columns, right? The student picks the hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, professor. Okay. Yes. okay, great. So the student picks the, so let me just close a few more. Okay, the student picks the uh, attend or audit option. I think that I need to close a few more of them. Maybe I need to close edge also. Okay, let me close this also. Unpin. Okay. Um, okay, I think it's enough. Okay, now. The student picks, okay. Uh, where is that? The student picks the attend or audit options and presses the Register button, right? Presses the register button. Okay, then what happens? Kindly go to go to the website and check that once you press the register button, what happens? Uh, Shri Yesh, you are with us. Yes, sir. You you tell us that once you press the register button, what happens? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it it so the terms and condition. Yes. So upon the press upon pressing the the register button uh, 
this step at n the the system shows the terms and conditions conditions the terms and conditions are customized are customized according to the student and according to the picked class right so now for example you are a developer now you read this thing that uh, the terms and conditions are customized according to the student and according to the picked class right so how are you how do you think that how you were going to make it yes now you want to make it right so we are not just writing it for the sake of writing we are going to make it according to this use case right whatever is written here you have to make that right so how you are going to make it for example right. like programmatically right once you are coding right so what do you think how you are going to make it Uh, with the help of mockups, we can create a mockup. Sort of mock no, definitely, we are going to create mockups, right? Uh, but once we have created the mockups, now it comes to coding, right? Now you you must think from the brain of a developer or coder, right? That how you are going to make these things, how you are going to make it. Calling it, huh? Calling it, uh, calling. So look. So how we are going to make it? We we would have a generic set of instructions somewhere, right, in the server, right. So as you log in, as you log in, those generic set of instructions are customized according to that student who is logged in, right. And those customized student customized set of instructions. Our terms and conditions are given to the front end JavaScript. If you go and inspect these pages, you will see that these terms or conditions are not present with every class, right? So they are present with JavaScript. Once you select that class, that JavaScript comes into picture, right? It further customize those instructions according to the class, and then show them to you. Right. So now this is a complex process, right? So, uh, so your call could be that hey, let me have them customized and generated at the server and placed with every class right in the page. But this would be a bad, bad approach. Why it would be a bad approach? Because set of instructions is like quite a bit of text, and if you are going to put that text repeatedly everywhere, it will make your page very heavy. right so this is not the right solution so the right solution is that that text must be present at one point within the code right and that one point is the javascript so that javascript holds that uh, those set of instructions right and then as you press the register button javascript at the run time customizes those instructions and show them Dinesh, are you getting me, my dear? Yes, professor. Okay. Right. So basically, you know, as we are writing these use cases, we must know this thing also that we have to make them also. As we are mentioning them over here, otherwise there is no use of them. Right. So whatever we are writing here, we are going to make them according to these these things. Are you getting me? right okay so we come over here we say 
on pressing the okay where i was and to pick the class right so they are customized according to the student and according to the picked class right the student presses the uh the agree check circle or check radio button and here we will mention that c you know whatever we want wireframe maybe 12 right as the student selects the circle the students slash parent signatures are shown right students and parent signatures are shown and pay with stripe button become visible right and here you will refer them to whatever the wireframe you want to refer right there you will show that button will be visible right and definitely here you have that cancel button you your your register button is converted to cancel button can you see this thing that the re register button is converted into cancel button and somebody can press that cancel to cancel this process right so again user experience you must not provide the user with an environment where he or she would think that you are trying to stalk them right that there is no way out so they will cross out the tab right so this is very and yeah yeah definitely there here we have an exception uh the student cancels the process right and once we come over here then what happens the student presses the uh, pay with stripe we will try button and the stripe pop up shows up right the pop up so here we can tell them the wireframe Fourteen, right? Because in this wireframe, it would be shown that as the pop-up will show up, we have customized it. We have placed our own logo over there on top, right? If you not tell them this thing, they are not going to make it, right? So, and shows the pop-up wireframe this, right? So, the student. Uh, presses the pay with stripe button and the stripe part of shows the student makes the payment always remember payment is originated from your server so this is very uh, you can say convoluted process pop up is shown at the front end as you know somebody hit the pay with stripe button right that button in the pop up 
right? It will send that information to the to your server. It will send that information to the Stripe server, and then your server will originate a payment which would be same as the payment at the front end. If both the payments match, then Stripe will take that payment. Right, so you should not make a fraudulent sign which is saying something different at the pop up that pay ten dollars and you are inadvertently charging hundred dollars. Right, so this is not good. Right, be very careful about it. This is fraud. Okay, even if you are doing it inadvertently. Okay, the student presses the pay with Stripe button and Stripe pop up shows up. The student makes the payment. Payment. Uh, uh, confirmation. Mail with terms and conditions is sent to the student. Right, and here. You know the payment information is not correct. So these are exceptions, right? So this is the method by which you are going to accomplish this. Task, right? So there, this is sometimes people will write in bullets. Some people will write in a narration, as I have written. Right? It all depends upon you. And once we have written it, now we will go and go to exceptions, right? And uh, here, incorrect promo code. Uh, in the event of incorrect promo code uh, pop up will show up. Here we'll refer wireframe, maybe 15, 16, right? A prob probable show up. The student will, student pop up, not will, uh, where is that? And with this uh, show pop up shows up. Shows up the student presses the OK button. To dismiss the pop up. The promo code field is emptied, right? So we have written amicably that in case of particular exception, we would not be in a condition, hey, what should we do now, right? We exactly know that what should we do in the event of this exception. Hey, everybody, let me ask exclusively. Uh, Avinash, have you got it, my dear? All this stuff? Yes, sir. I'm sorry for this. So, and uh, who else is there? Menthan, have you got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, Dinesh, have you got it? Yes, sir. Shri Yash Patel, have you got it? And uh, Ankit Rao, have you got it? Yes, sir. Okay, any question about it? No. Right, so this is exactly, and sometimes a use case can go on multiple pages. Right, so this is not a limitation that a use case will be done in uh, on one page, right? So use case can go on multiple pages, right? Are you getting me? So, and then, you know, definitely you'll write post conditions for, sorry, these exceptions for this also, 
and you write it for this also. Right, and then uh, we'll say one, uh, so here post condition in post condition, what should we write? At once registered the class count increments by one. Right? You can see the, what there is class count, right? So increments by one. So now once I write this thing over here, what would it mean? It means that once you register, right? Once you register, class count will increase for everybody. Whosoever is uh, on that page. Are you getting me? Right? So there are two things. One thing is, let me go over here. Say so this is our page. Say so this is our page. And over here currently class count is five. So a lot many people are connected with this page. Right? This is some other person sitting in front of computer, right? This is some other person sitting in front of your computer, right? So not many people are connected. Say this student over here registers, right? So he, he sends the register request, register. So one thing is that since he is registering, so this five will be converted to six and this will come over here. Right. The other possibility is that this six is communicated to the rest of other people also. Right. So now the deal here is that both of these things are to be developed in altogether different ways. Right. The first thing is that once you want to make this thing that you know if once he, they register they get the response back and rest of them will uh, get this update once they refresh the page or once they will come back on the page. This is altogether one different type of coding. But if you want, on the other hand, if you want this thing, that once this guy registers, this information is not only transmitted back here, but goes here also and here also, this is altogether a different kind of coding. Right. So while you are you are writing the use case, you must see this thing. That whatever you are writing, right? How you are going to how your developers are going to make it, what kind of technology they have to use, and how they are going to accomplish this task. And definitely, you know, once you want, your requirements are finer, right? You you are requiring better user experience, you need to hire better developers. Not, not everybody is going to develop this green thing for you. Right? Are you, are you getting me guys? Right? So basically, uh, you must know this thing that, you know, whatever you are trying to accomplish, right? What is the manpower involved behind the scene for that? Got it? So it looks looks like that you guys are now getting a little bit afraid. Don't be afraid, right? So this is this is our job, right? We work on these things every day. And this this is how we must think of, over these things. And you know, we need to have, get this estimate that hey, what 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 how are these things are going to be made. Any questions so far? No. Okay, so, so this use case is nearly complete, but I would invite you that go on the web page and see that what are the things I intentionally missed for over this use case and try to further complete you know, this use case. I will send you this Word document today. 
Don't worry about it. And I will ask you to complete it for me. So now we start writing all these use cases. For example, in a very medium scale project, there could be like 100 use cases. Very, very easy. You have to write them all, right? Once you have written them, now we, have, we need to have some index of these use cases. So that index is known as use case summary. Right, so basically we make a list over here. So let me go back to my Word document. So we have got like use case one, use case two, use case 23, right? So like a book, you know, we have a book of use cases. On that book of use cases on the top, we put an index of that, right? That what use case number is what, right? So we come over here and we write use case summary. So you can use... Uh, do we also need to write the flow of this use case? Um, uh, what do you mean by flow of the use case? Like uh, uh, first uh, student is going to register, then it's going to do the poor payment. Uh, then so this is the flow. Description is the flow. Okay. Right? Description yeah. is the flow. We write it in wording because most of the time it happens that for these use cases, we need to get feedback of those people also who are not computer science people. Okay. Right. So basically, you know, this is a venture between uh, between principal who might not even know that what he's asking and uh, what is going to cost him, right? And uh, and between a computer scientist by itself. So so basically, you know, this is written in wording like this, and it must be written in a very elaborate way, uh, in such a way that, for example, you just write this thing that you uh, want to show terms and conditions. So a developer can easily show generic terms and conditions. Yeah. Right? The developer yes. can easily show generic terms and conditions, right? Rather he will insist or she will insist that, you know, these terms and conditions should be available in some other page maybe, right? So, so but the deal here is that here we want to have these terms and conditions customized according to that user but not only according to that user, but according to that class, which is which he has picked or she has picked. Yeah. Right. So now the requirement is different. Right. And basically we have to understand this thing that more are the requirements, right? The more is the development work. Yeah. More. Right. So, so basically you have to hand over one terms and conditions, entire text from your server side to the, uh, to the client side and at the client side it decided that which class is being picked and then according to that class those terms and conditions would be customized yes. right are you getting me guys yeah right so don't be afraid of this is your work so the more scope of work is happier we are right we developers cannot be eliminated at least in this century <laughs> they they tried to they 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 tried to invent uh, artificial intelligence right and you know why would why were they trying to invent art, artificial intelligence or ai do you have any idea uh, less human effort no 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 the main thing was to eliminate the developer okay they were trying this thing that the computer will write its own code Right, they, they wanted to eliminate the developer, right? So what happened on the other hand is that developer now is not only eliminated, more development jobs were created. <laughs> so, so we should be happy about it. Okay, so any question? No, no question? Okay, so basically I was telling that once we write all these various use cases, right? And you must write a few of them at least, right? And you must pick a use case out of like, uh, for example, you can pick it from pickaface and nick.com or you can pick it from machamet.com and just because I know these use cases for sure and I want to see that you pick one use case and write it completely. Okay, so once you just uh, register the class, count incre increments by 
one. So this is the post condition, right? And one more thing over here. Mm. A student makes the payment, the confirmation mail with terms and conditions and attend class zoom dot us link is sent to the student right so it, it is telling that you know uh, to attend a class you have to go to a different forum for that right we have not made this functionality from within our web portal any questions so far okay so once you write these use cases, then you make use case summary. Our use case summary is made as the use cases are written. So we make that number one, number one, a student signs, sign in. An admin sign in, right? Um, a, a faculty sign in, a student sign up. Right, a meta, a D meta sign in. There is no sign up for meta, right? Because meta is created by definition uh, in the code, right? So meta is hard coded in the sense that uh, uh, there is only one meta and that is already created at the time of deployment of code. Okay, meta sign in, then meta creates an admin. Meta creates a faculty, right? So basically we make this list of these use cases here, right? This is known as use case summary. Right, and this use case summary is placed on the top of the folder where we put all these various use cases. Right, once use cases are made, once user summary is made, once uh, then we go back, improve the wireframes, right, and we make mock ups. Right. Now these mockups are made in software, like for example, um, Visual Studio, uh, not Visual Studio, I'm sorry. Uh, for example, uh, Illustrator, uh, Photoshop, Visio, right? So basically Smart Draw, all these various softwares are available where you know we draw these mockups. Those mockups are ready probably we can start working on the front end, but hold on, this is not the right time to start working yet. Right, then we need to make a use case diagram. Right, which would be my next topic of discussion. I don't want to start it today. So this would be the next topic of my discussion. Any question so far? No, sir. Right, so so basically, uh, we need to make a use case diagram next, right? And what is use case diagram? Why is it important? Right, we'll discuss it next. So, any question? I'm looking at Dinesh, and I'm seeing that you are a little bit worried about something. Why are you worried? No, 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 taking notes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> I thought that you got worried that is this was well. yeah. definitely we need to have this much work at least once we, we want to make a software. Otherwise, you know, we would not be able to reach anywhere. Right? Yeah. 
any question so far any question no problem okay great so then i'll stop over here and uh, i will encourage you to do this homework that you have to go to these websites and just write a good uh, use case for them right so basically the purpose of use case is that by reading that use case a developer should be able should be fully able to develop that functionality otherwise there is no use whatsoever of that use case right got it okay i will sign out right now and uh, if you don't have any question i will sign out and uh, and if you want to have me for your office hours i'm available right now otherwise you can simply sign out thank you very much you have a good day thank you